Good morning. Today is the Feast of St. Isaac Jogues and Companions, North American Martyrs. To prepare for the Holy Mass, let's pray our morning Angelus. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, she conceived by the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it done to me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. And the word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Pray for us, the Holy Mother of God. That we let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Our opening hymn is number 575, Faith of Our Fathers, 575. Faith of our fathers living still In spite of dungeon, fire, and sword Oh, how our hearts beat high with joy Whene'er we hear that glorious word Faith of our fathers, holy faith we will be true to thee till death. Our father chained in prison's dark, were still in heart and conscience free, and truly blessed would be our fate if we like them should die for thee. Faith of our fathers, holy faith, we will be true to thee till death. May we never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, for the word of the cross is the power of God to us who have been saved. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You have shown us the way to the Father. Kyrie eleison. You have given us the consolation of truth. Christe eleison. Christe eleison. Are the good shepherd leading us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who chose to manifest the blessed hope of your eternal kingdom, by the toil of Saints John de Baruf, Isaac Jogues, and their companions, and by the shedding of their blood, graciously grant that through their intercession the faith of Christians may be strengthened day by day. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law, 
though testified to by the law and the prophets, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction. All have sinned and are deprived of the glory of God. They are justified freely by his grace through the redemption in Jesus Christ, whom God set forth as an expiation through faith by his blood to prove his righteousness because of the forgiveness of sins previously committed through the forbearance of God to prove his righteousness in the present time that he might be righteous and justify the one who has faith in Jesus. What occasion is there then for boasting? It is ruled out. On what principle that of works? No, rather on principle of faith. For we consider that a person is justified by faith apart from works of the law. Does God belong to Jews alone? Does he not belong to Gentiles too? Yes, also to Gentiles, for God is one and will justify the circumcised on the basis of faith and the uncircumcised through faith. The word of the Lord. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my voice and supplication. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, Lord, who can stand? But with you is forgiveness that you may be revered. With the Lord, I trust in the Lord. My soul trusts in his word. My soul waits for the Lord more than the sentinels wait for the dawn. With the Lord. Alleluia. 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 I am the way and the truth and the life, says the Lord. No one comes to the Father except through me. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The Lord said, Woe to you who build memorials of the prophets whom your fathers killed. Consequently, you bear witness and give consent to the deeds of your ancestors, for they killed them, and you do the bidding, building. Therefore, the wisdom of God said, I will send to them prophets and apostles. Some of them they will kill and persecute in order that this generation might be charged with the blood of all the prophets shed since the foundation of the world. From the blood of Abel to the blood of Zechariah who died between the altar and the temple building. Yes, I tell you, this generation will be charged with their blood. Woe to you, scholars of the law. You have taken away the key of knowledge. You yourselves did not enter and stop those trying to enter. When Jesus left, the scribes and the Pharisees began to act with hostility toward him and, be, and to interrogate him about many things, for they were plotting to catch him at something he might say. 
the gospel of the Lord. So today we celebrate the Feast of St. Isaac Joves, John de Roof and Companions, the North American Martyrs, or as our Canadian friends say, the Canadian Martyrs, but that's a whole other story. Martyred in the 17th century um, by the tribes, the native tribes in that location um, in various ways and at various times, although somewhat close together. Uh, martyrs who mean a lot to myself, personally, as they should to all of us. Uh, one, because I was Jesuit educated, and these are Jesuit martyrs. Secondly, I did have a chance on multiple occasions to visit the shrine in New York, especially devoted to Isaac Jogues and his companions, and then also one time uh, was able to visit and offer mass at the shrine in Canada, especially devoted to where John de Brouf was martyred. These martyrs, like all martyrs, but in a particular way, these martyrs show forth various moral virtues to be admired, um, which gives us occasion to ponder their, the theological virtues they had and to wonder how they developed such a high level of virtue. So first, they're very obedient men. They're very obedient. They saw, uh, we had in our abbey the, their table reading. We read for our table reading at mealtime uh, one um, week for a couple weeks the biography of these martyrs and they would stress their obedience, how they saw the will of God through their superiors. So it's important for us to see, to, to be obedient to those under, um, under whom we must be obedient and to see God's will uh, being communicated through those who have proper authority over us. They're also very chaste men. Uh, the, without going into detail, uh, there's many temptations uh, that they would have faced in the area. Um, the tribes at that time, let's put it this way, didn't practice modesty very well. They were uh, tempted in many, many ways against sins against chastity. They never fell. So a great model of chastity for us, um, but also especially models of patience and fortitude. Uh, the tortures that they endured, I won't even repeat because they're horrific. Um, if you're interested, look it up. But suffice to say, there are horrific tortures. If it wasn't for the gospel of Christ, it would be material for a horror movie. But for these men, because of the gospel of Christ, it's material for, for, for glorification. They're, they were glorified by the very tortures that were meant to humiliate them. Isaac Jokes and Don, John de Babruf, the two leaders of these, uh, of these martyrs, stand out amongst those who showed special bravery and fortitude. Isaac Jogues was tortured for at length in various ways. Um, again, you can look it up to see how, how it's done. Uh, one, I'll just say, one of the tortures left him uh, missing some of his fingers, okay? Uh, and he actually was able, after that initial torture, to get back to France. But rather than just saying, okay, man, I went through a lot there and, and just be, you know, if you would understandably avoiding going back to, to, to the new land, he said, but we didn't finish our job. We didn't finish our mission. We have to go back and baptize more. Their faith came out. They were constantly baptized, and their whole goal was to bring the kingdom of Christ to these people. So he went back. He actually went back to where he was originally tortured, and then he was killed. John de Babruf underwent a horrible night of tortures horrific tortures, to the point where those who were torturing him even admired his courage uh, and manifested that in a very uh, various, various uh, odd ways, how they showed how they, man they admired his, his tortures, uh, how they admired his courage by enduring his tortures. Um, again, material for a horror movie if it wasn't for the fact that he's doing this for the sake of Christ. So these men, very courageous men, very heroic men, very chaste men, um, very obedient men, heroes in so many ways, very manly men. It's, you know, they don't, it's, they don't make men much like this anymore. What was the 
underlying motive? Well, it's because those virtues of faith, hope, and charity, they had one desire, to spread the kingdom of Jesus Christ. We heard a reference to uh, them wanting to bring uh, the kingdom of Christ, a reference to the everlasting kingdom of Christ in today's opening prayer. And they're Jesuits, and one of the key Jesuit meditations in Ignatius's exercises is the meditation on the kingdom of Christ. They had a great faith in Christ, a great love for him and his church and his kingdom. The church is the kingdom of Christ on earth, the Catholic church. So they wanted to spread his Catholic church throughout the world. And that's what motivated them to go out there to save these souls. They also recognized the darkness of those pagan religions. Right? You read their writings. Some of the writings are on display there at the shrines. And it's, uh, they're very realistic and charitable at the same time. They're, they're very realistic about how the tribes in that region were under the, the darkness of paganism and of the devil, right? That their, their religions were not the true religion, that it was the devil working mostly the, because they, they were, the way these tribes acted were very, uh, very dark, very tortures all the time, and it was, it was very, very brutal, very brutal. And, and that's why they knew tortures could be awaiting them and, in fact, did await them. So they knew that we need to bring, they need to bring the gospel to these people in order to save their souls. And so they did. And so what's the takeaway? What's the takeaway for us? Well, first, on that last point, for us to see the importance of bringing the gospel of Christ to all others, those who have heard it, those maybe who have heard it and forgotten it, maybe, and those who haven't heard it in one way or another, by our words and by our deeds, and to want to spread the kingdom of Christ, which is the Catholic Church. That is often seen as, in, even in some Catholic circles, as a politically incorrect thing, but that's the case. That's why we have the Feast of Christ the King, uh, the last Sunday before Advent. The whole reason why that particular feast it was established was for us to realize how the whole world must be under the, the kingship of Christ, that Christ is the King of heaven and of earth, and that all persons and nations need to be under the yoke of Christ's kingdom. And if that's not done, then the world is going to suffer. That's the whole point of that feast day. So we must seek to spread the Catholic Church. We must seek to make, bring all others into the Catholic Church, which is the kingdom of Christ on earth. Again, by our words and by our deeds. So that, and that is born out of love for Jesus Christ, who is the king of the universe, as well as his mother, the queen of the universe. And on that point, to arrive, to even approach that same faith, hope, and charity, as well as all the other moral virtues that flowed from that, that faith, hope, and charity that these heroic men had, we need to be men and women of prayer. You're doing a great job, a great deed by coming to Sunday Mass, and it's important to keep prayer throughout the day, and that's where Our Lady's Rosary comes in. We are praising, praying the Rosary every day, throughout the day, again, at least five decades. Blessed Alma de la Roche, my holy patron, says 15 decades is the standard. You know, maybe one in the morning, one midday, one in the evening. You know, just to make our days a days of prayer, especially for meditating on those mysteries of our Lord through the intercession, with the intercession of Our Lady, our faith, hope, and charity will grow leaps and bounds uh, so that we will have the same, or at least approach the same virtue as these heroic men. And if we are called upon to do heroic deeds like they were called upon to do, that we will be ready. And so through their intercession, of uh, the intercession of St. Isaac Jogues and Companions and John David Roof, as well as, of course, our Lady of the Rosary, St. Joseph, and all the other saints, angels and saints of God. Uh, may all of us first be men and women of prayer so that we may grow in these virtues of faith, hope, and charity and all the other moral virtues that we need to live saintly lives. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. St. Joseph, Mary, Queen of Martyrs, Mary, Queen of the Most Holy Rosary, St. Agatha Joes, John David Barbouf, and Companions, and St. James, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Jesus exposed the hypocrisy of the scribes and the Pharisees who built the memorials of the prophets who were killed by those who would not listen to the word of God. But in seeking to destroy Jesus, they were following the violence of those who killed God's messengers. Let us pray for the grace to truly honor the righteous persons. Our response, Lord, help us to follow righteous people. Lord, help us to follow the righteous people. May the people of God honor the prophets, the righteous, and all the saints by following their holy lives and asking their intercession before the glorious throne of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, help us to follow the righteous people. May public officials honor the heroes of the country, not by platitudes, but by imitating the heroes' love and sacrifices for the nation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, help us to follow the righteous people. May children honor their parents by their love and affection and support in their parents' own age, old age. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, help us to follow the righteous people. May young people give respect and remain close to the elderly so that they can benefit from the elderly's wisdom based on their long experience. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, help us to follow the righteous people. May we honor our beloved dead by keeping their beautiful memories and by praying for the repose of their souls. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, help us to follow the righteous people. And we pray for the intentions of this Holy Mass, which is for Tecla Sanchez, as we also pray for the following intentions for Leanne Galindo, Amalia Onofre, Cherry Eisen, Elmo Rafael Santiago, and we pray for our sick, for their consolation and strength, for Victoria Pineda, Riza Angeles, Lorenzo Moran, Kimberly Pham Hewitt, Judy Morgan, Lumi Palacio, Brava Yenka, Rose Quimlot, Jay Donahue and family, Joseph Chong, Luvi Chervania, Jose Aravalo, and Patrick DeHaven. And we pray for our deceased, for Bishop Todd Brown, for Matit Pastanias, for Lourdes Manuel, for Patricia Otranto, John Donahue, Virgil De La Cruz, Nancy Scott, Jose Ariel Galleto, Jose Ariel Galleto Camo, and Manuel, Manuela Sidim. May our deceased be given eternal rest, the sick strengthen, and the these intentions granted, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, help us to follow the righteous people. And we continue to pray for peace in the Middle East, as well as in Ukraine, and we, as we also pray for all the victims there, and for the repose of those souls of those who have died there, as well as praying for, commending to God's mercy the souls of the children who have been, been lost in the war against the unborn through abortion, as we pray for an end to abortion, and the conversion and healing of all those who have been wounded by it. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, help us to follow the righteous people. Almighty Father, may the memories of good people remain in our hearts and in our lives by our imitation of their godly lives. May we build on the good foundation they have begun. This we ask through Christ our Lord.
pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we venerate the passion of your martyrs, Saints Isaac Jogues, Dundee, John David Roof, and companions, grant that through this sacrifice, O Lord, we may proclaim worthily the death of your only begotten Son, who, not content with encouraging the martyrs by word, strengthen them likewise by example, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, mighty and eternal God, for the blood of your blessed martyrs, Isaac, Job, John, de Babuf, and companions, pour out like Christ to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works, by which in our weakness you perfect your power, and on the feeble be so strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty, Without end we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Plenis Uncheli et Terra, Gloria Tua, Hosanna in excelsis, Benedictus, Qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna in excelsis. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, 
We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension to heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to your Son. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Isaac Jogues, John de Babeuf, and companions, as well as St. James, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Kevin, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this, fa this family whom you have summoned before you. and your compassionate, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. <clears throat> Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Grace is grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant you peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. On your stay, we totally speck at mundi, miserere nobis. On your stay, we totally speck at mundi, miserere nobis. On your stay, Dona nobis pace. 
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven.
Corpus Natum, De Maria Virgine, Vere Passum, Immolatum, In Cruce Promine, Cuius Latus, Deforatum, Fluxit aqua et sanguine, est o nobis pregustatum, mortis in examine. O Jesu Ducis, O Jesu Let us pray. Having fed upon heavenly delights, we humbly ask you, O Lord, that by the example of blessed Isaac Jobs, John de Berbuf, and their companions, we may bear in our hearts the marks of your Son's charity and suffering, and ever enjoy the fruit of perpetual peace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Prayer to Saint Joseph. Hail, guardian of the Redeemer, spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to God entrusted his only Son. In you Mary placed her trust, and with you Christ was secure and safe. Blessed Joseph, to us too, show yourself a father and guide us in the path of life. Obtain for us grace, mercy, and courage, and defend us from every evil. Amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle, and be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan, and the other evil spirits who so go about the world, seek the ruin of souls. Amen. And having just uh, had a, our day of adoration for pro-life intentions, I again ask uh, and give a friendly reminder to please pray for Ohio, which is my native state, as the days approach for a very crucial vote on November 7th. They will be, the people will be determining whether to put a so-called right to abortion in the Constitution of Ohio, very important. So we need to pray very hard. I ask that you pray a rosary a day uh, for that intention, uh, for the demons to be defeated to find that bill and that we get a pro-life victory in that very important vote, not only for Ohio, but for the entire nation. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. In our closing hymn, in honor of these saints who work so hard to spread the kingdom of Christ on earth and sort of bring souls to the kingdom in heaven, is number 270 to Jesus Christ, our sovereign king. Number 270. To Jesus Christ, our sovereign King, who is the world's salvation, all praise and homage do we bring, and thanks and adoration. Christ Jesus, victor, Christ Jesus, ruler, Christ Jesus, Lord and Redeemer. Verse 3. To Thee and to Thy Church, great King, we pledge our heart's oblation until before Thy throne we sing in endless jubilation. Christ Jesus, victor, Christ Jesus, ruler, 
Christ Jesus, Lord and Redeemer.